Hallelujah! Praise to the Trinitarian God. Amen. Praise to God the Father, God the Son, yes. and God the Spirit. Praise to the one who loved mankind so much that he came and died on the cross for the sin of the world. Yes. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal word of God. Yes. Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. That's right. Bible tells us in the beginning, men and women who were created in the image of God chased the sin against God and against one another. Bible tells us God gives solution to mankind mm. for the sin they have done against Him yes. and against one another. That's right. Solution was the Messiah, the eternal Word of God, is going to come and die on the cross for the sin of mankind. Yep. Through His blood on the cross, man and woman made right with Holy God. Amen. Through His blood on the cross, we can call our God, our Heavenly Father. That's right, that's right. Through His blood on the cross, we were made righteous in front of Holy God. Oh, yes. Praise to the God. Yes. Today is also something very special day for us. Yes. It is Father's Day. Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, brother. Thank you, thank you. Any fathers around? Any fathers? <laughs> Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. And yeah. how Happy many Father's kids Day. have you got? Just a two, just a just, two. That's, two. That's enough, enough, that's enough. So what have you done today? That's, that's enough work. What, what have you done? What have I done today? Today, you know, I went to church earlier on and we celebrated Father's Day. But the, other thing, the, the thing is, we didn't just celebrate Father's Day, but we also spoke about the greatest example of a father, and that's God himself. You know, God describes himself in the Bible as our Heavenly Father. And so we're able to celebrate this time when our Heavenly Father, who set an example of how to be a father, has also given us children, and in the same way we have a relationship with our children, God, our Heavenly Father, sees us as Christians, as His children. We have a Heavenly Father who is concerned for us. Yes. We have a Heavenly Father who is compassionate on us. Yes, right. We have a Heavenly Father who pours down His grace for us. Yes. Who cares for us. Yeah. Who rescues us from our sins. Yes, He does. Who rescues us from the wrath of hell. That's right. We have a Heavenly Father who deserves all praise. All praise. And He is our Heavenly Father because of the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes, amen. And that's why we can be reconciled to him because of what Jesus Christ did. Now we can be reunited to our Father who loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus Christ to die on our behalf. And so we can now, um, we are now um, adopted as his children and, and we can be eternally with him. As Christians celebrate Father's Day, yes. we know all over the world, every human being, most of human beings are celebrating Father's Day as well. That's right. So it's not something to the Christians, yeah. but it is Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, yeah. everyone celebrating Father's yes. Day. Yes. They Absolutely. remember the care and love their father give it to them. Yes, right. That's but right. it is special for Christians because we have a God who we can call our Father. Right. We have a God who looks down and then tells us, you are my son and you are my daughter. Yes. I love you. I am well pleased with you. That's right. That's right. As of course it comes to the Islam. Men of Islam who is identified as the Muhammad, yeah. so-called prophet, yes. is supposed to be the best example to mankind at all times. That's right. In the, in the, in the, in the Quran, Surah 33, Ayah 21. It says that he's the best example, the greatest example of mankind. Now, it's not just in the, um, in the 7th century, it's for all time. He's this perfect role model that Allah has given us as a gift um, to be this example um, for us to follow. So today we want to look at it. Yes. Is Muhammad as identified the best example? also can be the best example for the fatherhood. That's right, that's right. Islamic tradition tells us Muhammad has kids, he had children. Yes. We want to examine his fatherhood life and then see if we can call him best father or Muhammad is going to make the history to be one of the worst father ever lived. <laughs> I think as a Christian answer is very clear. It's very 
Exactly. He's going to make it to the history as one of the worst father ever. That's right, that's but right. That's let's right. examine his life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Islamic tradition tells us he had a couple of children. That's right. That's right. He had three children. He had three children. Okay, he, just, according to Islamic tradition, he had seven or eight children. Oh, seven or eight children, sorry. According to Sunni tradition, of course. Yeah. Okay. So, none of the children lived long enough. Right. Islamic tradition talks about Fatima. Yeah. She was his daughter. And we know Muhammad's relationship with Fatima. Yeah. Muhammad discredited her. Muhammad did not um, listen to her approach mm. when Fatima stepped in to encourage the marriage in the life of Muhammad. Yeah. Also, we know Muhammad left nothing for Fatima as an inheritance. But today, we want to more focus on Muhammad as the father of Zayed. Right. Zayed right. bin Muhammad. That's right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. what do we know about Zayed? What we know about Zayed is Zayed was um, the adopted son of Muhammad. And so Zayed married a woman called Zainab. And so they, this happily married couple, Zayed and Zainab. And what happens is Muhammad, the so-called prophet of Islam, comes to visit the, the household and as he comes and he knocks on the door, Zainab comes to meet him and she's basically half dressed. No, no, uh, so as Muhammad comes towards her house, window opens, curtain moves and then she, he sees her half naked. So right, so he spots Zainab not fully clothed. And so what we have is he starts to have desire for her. He starts to lust after his adopted son's wife. And so, you know, he, 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 cut, he, he, he knocks at the door and he's asking for Zaid and she's not at home. So what he then does, he says, I'm going to go away and I'm going to um, come back another time. Do you want to continue on the story? Yeah, so that's kind of interaction of the story. But yeah. essentials we know is Zayed is called the son of Muhammad. When it says son of Muhammad, mm. Islamic tradition really means it. That means Zayd was going to take the inheritance and have the rights of the normal son. Mm. And also we know Zayd is married to Zainab, who also sees Muhammad dear to her as father and mother. Mm. So there is a strong family relationship. That's right. That's Zayd right, yeah. and Zainab sees Muhammad as their own father. Right. And that was a question, but yes, you can make a comment. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can make a comment. But can we, just before you make your comment. Okay, sir. <laughs> we have not even looked at the narration. Let's first read the Quranic verses, should, should we and read then it? we will give you the background. The is, we haven't made it, made it, we haven't made, we haven't mentioned it. We haven't given you a source yet. We haven't given you a source yet. Narration. What is the narration? I tell you, the one you said he went into her and he saw half naked. Stuff. What? It's a weak narration. Okay. Ibn Kathir and others said this is a fabricated weak narration. Okay. I'm so gonna come out on the that. academic honesty to tell them about the authenticity of our narration. Don't yeah. just give us any narration. So okay. Let's, let's the Quran. Go Quran. Step by step. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's look at the Quran and then see the, what the Quran says. Okay. First, we examine Muhammad from the Quran which is the holy book of Muhammad yes. and then we will look at his practical customs yeah. Surah 33 verse 37, 36 and 37 okay. would you like to read it? Read it? okay I'll read it from here okay and when you said to him to whom Allah had shown favor and to whom you had shown favor keep your wife to yourself and be careful of your duty to Allah and you concealed it in your soul what Allah would bring to light and you feared men and Allah had a greater right that you should fear him but when Zaid had accomplished his want of her he gave her to you as a wife so that there should be no difficulty 
for the believers in respect of the wives, of their adopted sons. When they have accomplished their want of them, and Allah's command shall be performed. There is no harm in a prophet doing that which Allah has ordained for him, such as being the cause of Allah with respect to those who have gone before and the command of Allah is a decree that is made absolute. So clearly, so, so we read from the Quran, this is the source that we are using. So, Surah 33 verse 36 and 37 can be Muslim, Muslims don't want to hear the Quran no more. I want to preach the Bible. Yeah, of course, yeah. we will be preaching the Bible. We see once the Quran. again, okay. Muslims are so desperate, they want to hear from the Bible. Yes. Of course, as a Christian, yes. I read the Quran yeah. and then I see those verses are very disturbing. I do not want to read them. Therefore, I can understand Muslim wants to hear from the Bible. That's right. Let's just examine what the Quran and verse says. We're not saying Allah. He said Allah. <laughs> so, chapter 33, verse 36 yes. and 37. Yes. We have read it all of it, sir. All of it. I am sorry, you. Don't worry about him. Don't worry about him. We read it already. Rewind, rewind the video. Rewind the video. Okay. And Muhammad makes a decision. There is no choice of any human being right. to object that decision. That's right. Which already allows us to think Allah is encouraging people to commit shirk. But that's not the topic. Yes. In verse 37, he is the disturbing part of Father's Day. Topic is the Father's Day. And topic is how Muhammad is the worst example. Father. The worst and father in history. Father. Muhammad is the worst father in history. That's the subject, yes. Go and read the most hundred most influential men in the world. Who's number one? Who's number one? Brother, we're, we're, we're giving you from your own source. Who's keep reading, keep reading. Go to the British Museum. You're not even listening. Go to the British You're not even trying to listen. My friend, go to the British uh, Museum. Go on. And go and have a look. The most influential men in the world. Who's number one? Okay. Go and read, go and have a look. Tell us. Okay. Let, let, let's see if you stick to that. Let's see if you stick to that. Father, who is this? Let me make my point. After I make my point, sir, I'll give you time to respond. Quran, Quran tells us, verse 37 of chapter 33. When Sayyid had no longer needed her, when the Sayyid, when husband, does not need her, his wife anymore, Muhammad, you can but this is the Muhammad, this is the Muhammad who has been seen by Zainab and by Sayyid as her and his father. When your, when your husband doesn't need you anymore, therefore you can marry your father-in-law. Right, so it's very clear, okay? So, Are you disturbed by this? I, I'm very disturbed. I mean, think about this. Just pick this in your head before you respond, yeah? I want you to comprehend this, yeah? Right? Now, Muhammad was looked to by Zainab and Zaid as a fatherly figure. Muhammad adopted Zaid, okay? And so they look at him, just think about it, as a parental, as a father and as a mother. That's what, we, that's what you can read from the sources. Now imagine that. You're looking at someone who looks up to you as a father and yet you have sexual, lustful thoughts towards that person. Isn't that disturbing? Doesn't, isn't, isn't there a problem morally with that? Isn't that distasteful? That's my question to you. Sure. Brother, 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 brother. <laughs> He's over there, don't worry about him. Yeah. Let's have a calm discussion, sincere discussion, okay? Answer the question. Is that distasteful, yes or no? 
I explained like I explained last week that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is the source of our morality. Whatever he does, he tells us to jump off a cliff that is the moral thing to do. Okay? He tells us, he tells us now, what this verse came and you did not you seem to have overlooked the part of the verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the reason behind this is to show you that it's okay to marry the wife of your adopted son. It is, it is not your real biological son. We know the reality of Allah and we know what is right and wrong of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, how do you know what morality is? You just look it up. Who told you that an adopted son is a real son? We're going to respond to that, yeah? Respond, so, yeah, yeah. Here's the thing, here's the thing. You just told us Muhammad is your moral standard. If he tells you, jump from the cliff, you would That's not really right. Wow. I am so grateful. I'm... Muhammad is not my not moral, moral standard. I am much, much higher having moral standards than yeah. Muhammad. You yeah. will see that. Yeah. I will never, never marry with my husband of my um, adopted daughter. son. Yeah. Husband of my adopted daughter. Wife, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will never do that. Why not? But Why not? Muhammad did that because Why that's not? wrong. I'm, I'm going to explain that to you. Yeah. Give me a chance. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. First of all, Muhammad was supposed to be the best example to mankind. Once the practice this, according to your, because Allah wants to tell people from now on, it's all right for you to marry, marry husbands or daughters of your adopted sons, or adopted kids, adopted children. Not your biological They're not your biological kids. Since when? Since when? Law, lawmakers needed to practice the law they have given. They do not need to practice the law they have given. But Muhammad thinks he needs to practice. Lawmakers do not do practice that. Muhammad could just say, from now on, you could marry husbands of your wives of your adopted son. I haven't given that one yet. But Muhammad, Muhammad needed to practice that. According to Tabari, because Muhammad had a last full desires for Zainab. I, I haven't finished my point. Second point you made was regarding that ado adopting is um, for them to marry their adopted son in the future. Isn't that the same Allah? Soon after, people complain and then call Muhammad, you married your daughter-in-law, suddenly tells us adoption is banned in Surah 33, verse 4 and 5. If Allah was going to ban the adoption, why Allah needed to use Muhammad to set an example to all community yes. for him to, for him to marry his daughter in law? Yes. The answer to this question, the answer to this question is, the answer to this question is that Prophet Muhammad is the best example. He is the living walking Quran. Yeah? Through his marriages, we know what is right and wrong. We know that you can marry someone young, someone old, someone who is divorced, someone who is widowed, and someone who is your so-called son, who is not really your son, your adopted son. The Arabs have a strong belief that if you have an adopted son, for example, if I have an adopted son, then his name would take my turn. Plus, he would become part of my name. The Quran came to say, no, don't mix the lineages about. There is a clear distinction. He is not Zayd bin Muhammad. He has his own son, father. Don't compare them together. And his Let wife step in. is a father. Muhammad is, say it has been called. Say yeah. it's been they have the same name. Until, until Muhammad had lost full desire. Until the revelation came. Say it called. Say it bin Muhammad. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. I am so grateful that there are only comfortable Muslims in Britain who think Muhammad is the best example when it comes to marriage. You can. You can marry the child. <laughs> Who's that you? You can marry the older kids. Who's that him? You just said. You, you can, can marry it. the younger kids. You can marry the younger kids. <laughs> uh oh. Those are the people we need to watch out. Yeah. If you are poking around. Pedo alert. If you are poking around with your kids. If you are 
Walking around with your That's daughters. Naughty. That's naughty. Those are the faces and the ideologies you need to look out for. Mm. I feel my kids or his kids or people's kids are in danger when the ideology of Islam is walking around. That's right. When you express Muhammad is the walking and talking Quran, I am so grateful. I am so grateful that Quran has been corrupted. That's right. Because Muhammad is the corrupted version of the Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. talking Quran. Wait, wait, wait. What is what is your evidence? What is your evidence that Muhammad says was not identified as the son of Muhammad? What is your evidence? Give us the evidence. Don't just make, make up things. Sir, what did you say? We're not, we're not speaking about Peter Peter. Lying, lying. lying. We're not speaking about pedophilia. We're saying that Muhammad was a worse example of a father. And because today is Father's Day. Now what often happens is you have hecklers who come and change the subject and start speaking about something completely irrelevant. So, back to the point, Muhammad is the worst example of a father. Now, I just want to make one point. I just want to make, no, no, I just want to make one point. Now, isn't this convenient? No, even isn't this convenient? No, no, you have to wait. Isn't it convenient that as soon as Muhammad started lusting over Zainab, all of a sudden, he got this revelation, he fainted, and got this revelation that, oh, Allah wants me to marry this beautiful, sexy woman. All of a sudden, he got this revelation. So what I'm saying is that everything that Allah and Muhammad desired or lusted after, somehow Allah just happened to make it a way in which he can be able to gratify his own okay, okay. sexual said, and lustful desires. Isn't that convenient? Okay. 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 Isn't okay. that look convenient? Let me make a point. No, 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 no. Let's he just... he won't answer. I'm going to give you time, sir. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. We have just seen the fruit of Islam in speaker's corner. We have seen a Muslim lady who claims to be Muslim, yet does not want to acknowledge Muhammad is one of the first father ever lived. <laughs> and then he no, who said no? Okay, but, 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 who said no? Come to the front. And then we see how disturbing it is. My question to you was, what is your evidence? Say it is not identified as the son of Muhammad. So, okay, can I ask a question? Wait, can I, can I ask you directly? Directly. Go, on. go, on, go. On. Where, where's your question? Quickly, quickly. I told you that Muhammad is the best example. We want, to, we need to know whether it's okay to have, it's okay to marry the, the wife of an orphan. The Quran is saying. Allowed. The Arabs used to consider Zayd the son of Muhammad because he adopted him. They called him Zayd ibn Muhammad. The Quran says, no, you cannot. At you can't make these claims. These claims are wrong. You can't take someone as an orphan. And that's why okay. in Islam, taking an orphan is haram. You can't take an orphan and say, he's my son. You can foster them. You can take them in. But you Where was Allah? When for decades, Muhammad Zayd has been called Zayd bin Muhammad. Where was Allah? Allah stepped in soon after Muhammad said half naked, adult, uh, uh, half naked daughter in law. Allah steps in and then says, From now on, Zayd is not Zayd bin Muhammad, but Zayd bin Harita. Where was Muhammad? Okay, I answer, Where was Allah? I answer, I answer, Where was Allah?
Allah. When the race Where was Allah? Allah. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam showed glasses or saw her half naked or any of that has been, as Ibn Kathir and others said, folks, it's a fabricated why? narration. Why? Why? Have the why? academic honesty. No, no, wait. Give me your sources. Why are they are Give us sources. You can't just make up stuff. Look, look it up. Because Ibn Kathir said there is no authentic sanad of this narration. It is a baseless sanad. Okay? You know what? You know what? Because of who? Hey. Because of who? Because there's no... Because of who? Because of who? Who is missing in that chain that um, discredits the other... Charles. The chain is Charles. fabricated completely. Just, okay, just get him so to concentrate because they're going to put him off. If the chain is fabricated completely, it's can you just... Can you just tell me why? Okay, let's go step by step, okay? I'm going to read it from Tabari. I did. And I'm going to read it from let, let me just say, let me just make some mathematical calculation. Wait, wait, wait. We're going to, we're going to, yeah. Calculation. When did Tabari write? This is beside the See, now it's beside the point. He wrote before Ibn Kathir era. Exactly. So what? So what? Right. When did Ibn Kathir wrote? Uh, 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 so you uh, don't know the dates. I'll educate you. 1,300 AD. Yeah. So what? There is approximately so so two, over 200 years between Tabari and Ibn Kathir. Mm. I'm going to read it from no, 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 from wait, wait, the Bukhari as well. Just a moment. Just a moment. Just a moment. So, wait, wait, wait. wait. You, you said one person at a time. You said one person at a time. Tabari. And then Ibn Kathir is discrediting the Tabari, who is historian. Can you just give me full reference? It's not a collection of hadith. This is what you don't understand. I never uh, said Tabari, Tabari the narration, is a hadith. The narration doesn't exist I in the books of hadith. Uh, you, you're not even listening. Tabari you're not even trying to listen, are you? You're not even trying to listen. You close your if you, listen, my friend, if you want to have fruitful discussion, we'll discuss with you. Otherwise, we'll, we'll shout over you. So, so, so you need to engage. If you want to engage, we'll engage. If not, we will just say what we have to say, okay? I can't have so, conversations with two so, 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 at the time, okay? so, okay, so, what, you, what is it? conversation with two what? Two what? Mushriks! Mush ah, it's, it's all coming out now. It's all coming out now, yes? Huh? Yes. Let's read the Tabari account and then see, also look at another Tafsir and then see what Muhammad said when he saw this half naked daughter in law. Don't you read it publicly, and Al Qurtubi and others who said sir, it is not, it's sir, a baseless. If they looked at all the books of complaints. I'll bring you Sahih Bukhari, I will bring you Sahih Business, I will bring you Tabari, I will bring you Ibn Kathir, I will bring you the Mishti, I will bring you sources. No way. She, 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 Zaid was always called Zaid B. Muhammad. So what he was called? He was called Zaid B. Muhammad. Okay. He has been adopted by that time. He is called the son of Muhammad. Yes? Not adopted son of Muhammad, son of Muhammad. Yeah, the same name, Muhammad. Okay. Perhaps the messenger of God missed him at the moment as to ask where Zaid. He came to the, his residence to look for him, but did not find him. Zainab. Just Zaid's wife rose to meet him because she was dressed only in shifts. The messenger of God turned away from her. She said, he is not here, messenger of God, come in. You who are as clear to me as my father and my mother. So Zaid is seen him as, far, uh, as like my father and my mother. Messenger of God refused to enter. Zainab had dressed in haste when she was told the messenger of God is at the door. She jumped up in haste and excited the admiration of the messenger of God so that he turned away murmuring something that could scarcely be understood. However, he did not say, say it overtly. Glory be to God, the Almighty. Glory to God who causes the hearts to turn. Let me just summarize. That's what Muhammad he says when he's so saw, naked. He just now. saw his daughter-in-law is half naked. What he says? Glory to God for the half naked Zainab. Glory to God. That's your prophet. Sense. So in a sense, glory to God.
if we change the hearts of men. The, the hearts to change the hearts of men. Ah, 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 that's disturbing. Continue. Just talk to yourself. Answer. Yeah. In this narration, Ibn Kathir says, "Bakara ibn Abi Hatim, Bakara ibn Abi Hatim, wa ibn Jariha, huna atharun an baadi salaf radiyallahu anhu, ajabna an tadrub anha sufhan li adam sahatiha." What that means? Ibn Kathir says. Ibn Jarir al Tabari narrates a, a narration, but this is completely to be thrown away in the dustbin because it has. Okay. Okay. So in summary, in summary, what you are saying is that you think it's okay for someone who has a daughter, who has someone who looks to them as a father, and it's okay for you to marry somebody who looks to you as a father. It's okay. No, no, no touching, no touching. Is that okay? Baba, his name, his name is, his name is Zaid Muhammad. He was a son, the adopted son of Muhammad. Do you agree? Do you agree with that? You haven't proved it. You haven't shown it. It doesn't Max? exist. It's like you can see every book of it. It doesn't exist. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Relax, relax, relax. I know. I know. It the, is very in, hard for me to say. What is Muhammad the, is the example of the whole part of life. Hearing Muhammad is the first example and first father. So, can you just, can you just tell us? Do you want to, do you want to Google? Um, can I go to the, you the book Surah 33 Ibn Khatir Tafsir? Why are you insisting oh, okay. on talking about their existence? It does exist! It does exist! It's a false narration, fabricated narration. It doesn't exist. You are not exist. Your information which you are giving me is a false. It's not satisfying. Because, I told you, a man, I have the here. because man who turns so up. I bring my father next week to tell you that he doesn't exist. I don't need to. You are telling me man who came six centuries after Muhammad is just telling us what people said is wrong. So I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. Wait, 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 wait. One person at a time. One hadith better than a Hey, sir, sir, sir. One person at a time. Story from. Just keep talking. I'm gonna read it. Same story from the Tabari, same story from Jalalayan, same story from the Vishnu. Are you serious? You Are you serious? Have... Yes, I am serious. I am very serious and very concerned. Can we talk about the father in the world, Muhammad, what he did to his daughter in so, law. So, 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 yeah, so he married his own daughter, had sex with his own daughter. Why don't you talk about Lut having sex with his own daughter? Noah being sexually seduced and they drug raped. By his own oh my yeah. God! Did you hear, guys? Wow! Muslims supposed to talk about God by while acknowledging Quran came to come from the Bible. Why you acknowledging? None of the Christians tell us God as a prophet or as as character who has been mentioned in the Bible is the best example to form, best example to mankind at all. Do you follow a lot? I don't follow a lot. No. no. And the Christians who follow a lot? Anyone follow a lot? Is the best example? No. They do not follow a lot. Yes. Lot was a simple person as David. Lot was simple as other human beings. Other prophets, yeah. want to talk about Muhammad hmm. because it is the teaching so Muhammad is damaging mankind. It is the teaching so Muhammad is allowing the now this is a double standard for Muslims. Muslims are confident to see that Muhammad is this perfect role model for them. Yes? Right, that's a fact. But then the double standard comes in when they say we state that every prophet is our perfect role model, which no Christian says that Lot is our perfect role model. No Christian says David is our perfect role model. No Christian says Moses is a perfect role model. Who we do say is our perfect role model is God himself, Jesus incarnated. 
And so, if you were going to draw a comparison, you would use the right, uh, you'd use what we actually believe and what um, our doctrine is. Not use a false comparison because it shows that you're disingenuous and you're not truly trying to engage with what we're discussing right here. Okay, so your perfect role model is Muhammad. Now, what we're asking again is this, it's very clear. Are you now acknowledging that it's okay, okay, as a good father to see your daughter or your daughter, um, your, hold on, hold on. Your daughter, let me finish. Hold on, hold on, hold on, one second, one second, one second. Don't worry, don't worry. Okay, so, hold on. Right, sir, sir, listen, yes. Your adopted son's daughter. Who has been called as the son of Who's been called the son of Muhammad, wait. Brother, brother, I won't let you talk again if you can cut me off. The son of, um, the adopted son of Muhammad, his wife. You're looking at, is it okay for you to look at the, 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 the adopted son and see his wife as someone who you can now marry, okay? First of all, you have sexual desires for that person, and then you want to take, you want them to both divorce so that you can marry that person. Is that okay? Is that fine morally? Yes. Your premise is wrong. The fact that Adam Sassalem did not look at her in lust. He did not see her half naked. That narration, as I said for the thousandth time, you know, does not exist. Because he hasn't, he hasn't shown that to us. He hasn't shown that to us. It's not my point to you. You haven't given it to us. You, you haven't given it to us. We've read it to you from your sources, but you haven't given it to us. The scholars of Hadith really mentioned that this narration has no basis. But your, your point still fails. <laughs> the fact is, she was married to his adopted son. That's the fact. So what? And he... So he, what? That is very disgusting phrase yeah. you just he, used again. That, he, you yeah. Yeah. Up, that, that's what I'm saying. When you become, when you follow Muhammad, your morality drops the floor. Hold on, just a moment. Can I just express what I heard? Christians, you are fifth. Is that what you said? You said that about Muslims. When, did we, that when did we ever say Muslims? I know Muslims what Muslims is something just about Christians. But it is amazing. You, you, see, now, now we've got a lying, deceiving Muslims. Hey, 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 yeah, hey, we've got hey, deception. No, 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 you can't say nothing. No, so here's no, the, no. Here's the point, couple of points I'm going to make, sir. No. I have got the Sahib. I've got the Ibn Qatir here. I've got the Ibn Qatir here. And Ibn Qatir does not stay. Tabari account is false. No. If the Qatar does not stand, state that. It is amazing. Muslims who claim to know Arabic recite certain Arabic and think can get away there. Yeah. If the Qatar talks it, does not state that. But here's the more disgusting thing. Mm. Muslims think Muhammad is the best example at all times. Mm. And they think, so what? He married his daughter-in-law. So what? Your daughter-in-law. You look at your daughter-in-law as your own daughter. Say that so. Muhammad as his own father. The way he sees her own father. Muhammad saw or should see Zainab as his own daughter. Because someone came into the family. But what happened is Muhammad, according to Islamic tradition, could not control his desires, caused marriage to break down and married his daughter-in-law. It makes Muhammad first father ever. It makes Muhammad first father ever because it co he causes his son, adopted son, to divorce his wife. It's so disgusting. That's right. And you know, if we were to draw a comparison, let's look at our Heavenly Father. When we look at the, our Heavenly Father, over and over again in Scripture, it speaks about his, his compassion on his children. It speaks about, you know, his, his protection over his children. It speaks about his love for his children. He speaks about giving his best for his children. You see, true fatherhood 
isn't just simply just being a dad who just kind of is in and out of a relationship or just, um, you know, a true, true fa um, father, fatherhood is, covers numerous things. It was the best for their, their, um, their sons and their daughters. But we don't find that. What we do find is a self-centered, a self-focused Muhammad who conveniently gets revelations any time he wants to be sexually gratified or every time he desires something and he'll take it at any cost, even to the detriment of his own son, um, his own adopted son. He is one thing you remember at Father's Day. Yes. Muhammad makes the history as one of the worst father ever. Yes. He, he, Allah causes Muhammad, Prophet who is supposed to be the best example to mankind, mm. having lost false desires for a married woman mm. who is supposed to be his daughter-in-law. Mm. Allah even steps in and then makes this marriage to break down. Mm. Allah steps in and justifies Muhammad last towards his daughter-in-law by uh, anointing Muhammad to marry with Zainab. Allah steps in in this Father's Day, he remembers, denies the beauty of adoption by saying no adoption from now on because men cannot control their lustful desires. Yeah, yeah. It is all disgusting things we remember on the Father's Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we look at the man who's supposed to be the best example to mankind and then we see how he tried to justify his fatherhood actions mm. by marrying and also causing the divorce in his son and his wife of his adopted his as Ad adopted son. Adopted yeah. son. Yeah. It's all disturbing. Yes. But brother, as you acknowledge, mm. we have a God who loved us so much mm. that he sent his one and only son mm. to die on the cross for us. Yes. We have a God who rebukes us when we sin against him That's right. and against one another. Yep. We have a God who disciplines us. Mm. We don't have a God who comes alongside of us when we sin against one another. Mm. We don't have a God who encourages us to sin against one another and against God. In this Father's Day, as we remember our Heavenly Father, who have love and compassion towards us, who loved us enough to send His Son to die on the cross, yes. we call Him as one of the best Father anyone can have. Yes, amen. Fatherless, homeless, Widows. Wherever you stand, yes. God is willing to be your father. Yes. God is willing to identify you as his sons and his daughters yes. by the blood of Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. That's right. Remember this Father's Day. You have a heavenly father who opens his heart and waits for you to be right, to stand right in front of him through the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Yes, God bless.